The ruling African National Congress has had a very bad start to the election year. It has been one scandal and controversy after another. We speak to John Steenhuisen, the leader of the Opposition Democratic Alliance. Welcome, John. Great to be with you, Chris, and obviously great to be with all the Biz News uh, viewers as well. And I hope it's a good year, not only for Biz News, but also for South Africa. May we start with the latest allegations of corruption in the higher education sector? Yes, obviously, this is a huge uh, cause of concern, uh, starting at the beginning of the year, and obviously the most important time of year for students, the beginning of the academic year. Uh, NISFIS has been bedeviled by corruption and maladministration and incompetent administration for a number of years now, and these uh, resulted in the scenes that we've seen over the last two years of students uh, sleeping in bathways, or bathrooms and hallways and in corridors at universities because the NISFIS money uh, has not come through and also being unable to buy even basics like food. And so this latest scandal now, which appears that there's been a kickback scheme operating within the Department of Higher Education and in the NISFIS scheme, uh, is very, very worrying. Uh, we obviously were very concerned when a number of service providers were uh, were appointed that nobody had ever heard of to do the direct transfer payments to students. And we've already seen that there's been a hefty administration fee that's being uh, accrued on all of those, which means there's less money for poor students uh, in, in the system. Um, obviously, this is incredibly uh, concerning. And uh, the organization on doing tax abuse, ALTA, released a very significant uh, dossier, but also voice recordings, which ostensibly show the chairperson of the NISFIS board in conversation with a number of senior officials around how they intend to protect uh, those service providers uh, from being exposed. And obviously, this is very, very, very concerning because it's already tough enough as a young South African uh, in an environment where we have the highest youth unemployment rate in the world. Here you've got young South African students, majority of whom are black, trying to improve their skills, trying to get marketable skills so they can find work, and they're having the ladder kicked out from underneath them by corruption, maladministration, and the very scheme that should be assisting them. Your party has laid criminal charges against the minister. Yes, we've laid criminal charges against Blade and Zamundi. We've also uh, set up an APIA application to obtain the Vax Month's report and various other reports that have been doing investigations into corruption at NISFIS. Uh, we've also asked the president to widen the scope of the SIU investigation that's currently underway into problems in the higher education department to include these latest allegations, as well as the other the kickback scheme, which just seems to be revolving around student accommodation, where exorbitant administration fees, exorbitant registration fees are being put onto service providers in order to for them to provide accommodation to NISFIS. Again, the more that this happens, the less there is to be able to spend on students and their actual needs. So very, very concerning. So there's a raft of actions. And then additionally to that, once Parliament reopens in uh, a week's time, we hope to be able to summon the minister to the portfolio committee. We will be able to hold his feet to the fire around what has been going on here. But certainly not a very, very good start to the academic year. And I'm very, very concerned that there's a significant chance that the beginning of the academic year is once again going to be interrupted by um, NISFIS's inability to be able to get the money where it's needed most and to make sure that students can register and can commence their studies this year. In another development, President Cyril Ramaphosa claims that social grants are likely to disappear if ANC loses the election. Uh, is he trying to blackmail the poor into voting for the ANC? What does this mean? President Ramaphosa is a coward, and his inability to be able to stand up to the corrupt within his own organization and within his cabinet have led to a situation where, in fact, the reality is that the biggest threat to social grants in South Africa is the ANC continuing in office. And I think it's shameful and cowardly of a president to play upon the fears of the poorest of the poor by threatening him in this, in this manner and making this completely empty claim that social grants would end. In fact, social grants will end if President Ramaphosa and the ANC remain in office because their poor stewardship of the economy, the incompetence of their departments uh, is 
significantly risky for the continuation and sustainability of the social welfare scheme. Just in the last uh, 48 hours, we've seen revelations of over 70,000 grant recipients uh, across the country who've not been able to access their social grants for January because of incompetence of the department. The reality is, and President Ramaphosa knows this, and this is why it's cowardly uh, with what he's done. He knows that in the DA's alternative budget and in our social development policy, both of which are available to publicly and which he is aware of, showed that, in fact, the ANC government has undermined grants significantly by the pitiful 2% increase in an environment where the inflation rate is above 5.2%. So, in fact, grant recipients are already poor off. We've put on the table a plan that will not only grow the economy, create jobs, and lift many, many people off social welfare, but also to ensure that the safety net of social welfare pays grants at the food poverty line so that they actually do make a significant impact on people who genuinely need that assistance the most. I think it is a, a despicable act of cowardice that the president would hide behind something like this, uh, something so, so fundamentally important to the very survival of so many people as some form of election gimmick. He knows that the DA run Western Cape uh, regularly wins the awards for the best payment of social grants. Nobody stands in sun or in uh, exposed to the elements when accessing their grants. Grant recipients are treated with dignity and respect where the Western Cape government uh, is responsible for providing pay points and the like. What we've seen is quite the opposite from national government. So if poor people, and particularly grant recipients, are concerned about the sustainability of the grant system going forward, well, they should vote the ANC out and make sure that they get a government in place that's competent, that can grow the economy so that we are financially sustainable, and that can efficiently and effectively ensure that grants are payable to those who need it the most. But on top of that, are actually creating jobs. What people want is jobs. And that is why I'm so proud of what the Western Cape's done uh, in the last year. 300,000 new jobs in the DA run Western Cape. That's real empowerment. That's real change. Lifting people out of poverty, off social welfare, and into a job, which is the best ladder towards achieving self-sufficiency and prosperity for a family going forward. Now, while the president now has millions of the poor fretting about their pitiful grants, may we talk about what it has cost the taxpayer to feed the president and his entourage on the presidential jet? Well, we put in a number of questions around this after it, there was a revelation that over 600000 was spent on catering for VIPs on a, on a recent flight that the president undertook between Washington uh, and the UK and South Africa. Uh, and the, the response that's come back is quite shocking. It's a bit of a mixed mess and, and a bit of a garbled response from the minister, but it does look like millions and millions of rands are being spent every month on catering on the VIP jet. And that is an outrage. First of all, South Africa shouldn't have a jet to fly the president around the world. Uh, South Africa should be flying commercial, like many other heads of state do in uh, similar economic circumstances to South Africa's. Secondly, it is a slap in the face to the thousands upon thousands of children who are going to bed hungry every night on the ground below, that right flying above their heads is a president and a small group of elite who are spending millions and millions of rands on food for themselves. This is something we simply cannot afford as a country. And if anybody was any doubt about where this government's priorities lie, this is a very good demonstration. The ANC and President Ramaphosa care about themselves. They don't care about South Africa. That's why they don't really care about load shedding, because all of them have generators paid for by the citizens of the country in their ministerial homes and official residences. They don't care about crime and criminality because they're surrounded by bodyguards that cost uh, billions of rand every year to the, to the citizens. They don't care about hunger and poverty and all of those things that are stalking our nation because they're insulated in their little world uh, of, of the elite. And I think that what we need to do is to ensure that we vote them out so that we can get a new government in place. I've already said any government that the DA is a major player in will ensure that that jet is sold and that we fly commercial like every other head of state in a similar economic status to South Africa. We simply cannot, in an economy that's not growing, 
in a country where 82% of, of South Africans are missing uh, one of the three meals a day, uh, where we have child malnutrition and hunger stalking the country, that we've got people flying around in jets spending millions of rands on food and luxuries. Uh, that's not a priority. The priority is making sure that our citizens can put food on the table, that we can ensure people have, have greater opportunities to find work and in a growing economy. And that's not going to happen when you have these misplaced priorities uh, of these jet-setting ministers and presidents while our people are starving. Meanwhile, in a quite startling development, the ANC's SG Fakili Mabalula seems to have admitted that the ANC lied to cover up the Nakandla fire pool uh, to protect former President Jacob Zuma. Is, is that how you read that statement from him? Yeah, I read it. It's absolutely clear that he said that, that MPs were lying when they were uh, putting forward those ridiculous defences around the chicken runs and the, uh, and the animal uh, hides being security features and, of course, the infamous fire pool. Uh, which was clearly a swimming pool meant for recreational use of the president, for which um, the South African public paid over 256 million rand. Um, what this is concerning uh, is the fact that many of those people who were on the Kandla ad hoc committee are still members of parliament. And some of them, in the case of Minister Kubai, for instance, uh, is now a minister in the cabinet. And that is very, very concerning that they would be implicated in having lied to Parliament and a parliamentary committee. But it goes further than that. There's also the issue around the various court cases that were brought against President Zuma, the DA and others around the Nkandla matter. And we're going to be going through those court papers and court submissions and affidavits submitted by ANC officials and, uh, and, uh, and members of parliament around that time because there's a very good chance they might have perjured themselves before the courts. If they're not admitting that they were lying about many of the defences to protect Jacob Zuma, well, I think there's going to be serious implications for those ministers and those members of parliament that remain members of parliament. Um, there's also the opportunity for executive ethics complaints against the president, who, as deputy president at the time, would have been and lead of government business, would have been very, very um, instrumental in in whatever decisions are made to tell the truth or not before those committees. But this is a very, very serious uh, situation that Fakile Mbulula has now landed the ANC in. Uh, and I think he significantly exposed a number of those people who were part of what we knew was an extensive cover-up at the time. We all knew it wasn't a fire pool. We all knew that those were chicken runs and goat, uh, goat pens and were not security features. Um, but it's just showing here again that this is a government that cannot be trusted. They cannot tell the truth. They cannot deliver. They cannot be trusted. They're led by a coward who cannot stand up to his own associates. And it's time to vote them out of office. And we will have that chance later this year. Thank you. That was John Steenhuisen, the leader of the Democratic Alliance, speaking to Business News about the scandal ridden start for the ANC to the election year. I'm Christine. Thank you, John. Thank you, Chris.